Hey, it's Tim Estrella, Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk, and my passion is trucks and SUVs. Clearly, if that's your passion too, hit subscribe, click the bell, and smash the like button. I'm doing a little bit different intro on this video. I wanted to do this is first video you're going to see on this Ford Super Duty, the 2020, on this channel. I'll make it a little bit different. I'm going to go ahead and put together an overall video. There'll be a towing video, an off road video will be separately coming later. But in this video, I have planned for you. I will have an intro, I will talk about what's new with the truck and you'll see what the new in the intro of off-road i'll show you the winch i'll show you towing a snippet of towing i'll show you on-road and off-road snippets of that and then we'll do a final overview on what i think of the truck so hey stay with me as we dive into this 2020 ford subduity Okay, let's talk about these new 2020 Ford Super Duty trucks. Now, one could argue these are just a mild refresh. However, I'd also argue they're a pretty good improvement. We have the new off-road tremor package. We have the new improved powertrain choices with the 7.3 liter V8 Godzilla engine. And we have the new upgraded third generation 6.7 liter power stroke diesel that puts out an impressive 1,050 foot-pounds of torque. And we also have these engines mated to a new 10-speed heavy-duty transmission that Ford designed. So these three things make a big impact when it comes to new generation of Ford Super Duty. On the outside, we have some upgrades as well. We have a new front bumper, we have a new front grille, and we have new LED headlamps that offer 20% more brightness than the prior generation. On the rear, we have a revised tailgate. We have a new bumper back there, and we have new tail lamps back there as well. And also on the front, we do have the air dam that goes down below the bumper. However, Ford was smart, and on the trimmer package, they have trimmed that up and folded it back in. So you still get the air dam for improved aerodynamics and some better cooling, but you don't lose the off-road capability of that trimmer package. Inside the cabin, there's a small list of changes, including updated interior materials like Onyx Argenta wood on the doors and media bin door for the Platinum. The limited model is completely refreshed with new ebony and highland tan colors and it being more modern. These colors are complemented with genuine leather and a coarse ash wood in black and modern brushed aluminum trim materials for limited trim. Arguably the biggest change is the trimmer package. This is the first time Ford's offered an off-road heavy duty package. This is above and beyond the FX4 package. It's squared aimly at Ram Power Wagon's dominance. They have done this off-road package and aimed it at Ram's dominance by several features. First, as a new 12,000-pound worn winch available in the gas and diesel versions. <coughs> cough, power, power wagon, power wagon, cough. Uh, you can get this in nearly all trims from XLT through Platinum. In F250 and 350 in the single rear wheel configuration, as well as only being the Super Crew. Basically, you can't get this in the lowest XL trim nor the highest limited trim. The package takes a stock Super Duty, trims the air dam down, like I said previously, adds Ford's in-house designed 1.7 inch piston twin tube dampeners. These have a large oil volume to keep the heat down and to make them perform better. They're tuned for soft dampening for low speeds while providing more control over more severe impacts. Ford says their internal hydraulic rebound will help soften the blow from the hardest hits. The trimmer also utilizes a locking rear differential, sorry, no front locking differential, but you can utilize this by pulling the shift on the fly 4x4 dial outward. This engages that, and this is combined with limited slip front differential as well. These improvements, along with 35-inch Goodyear Wrangler Duratrac tires mounted on a set of unique 18-inch matte finish black wheels, along with a 2-inch front end lift and the aforementioned shortened front air dam, give the truck an impressive 10.8 inches of ground clearance, 33 inches of water fording, and 31.65 degrees of approach angle with 24.51 degrees of departure angle. In other words, it sits higher, has better off-road equipment for rolling over objects, and can go places other Super D trucks simply can't go. Finally, Ford has given it its trail control feature. This is basically an off-road version of cruise control. You can set the speed between 1 to 20 mile per hour, and the truck will just go keep that speed up or maintain that same speed or reduce to hold that speed. All you do is steer. It's a pretty handy feature. There's also front cameras and 360 degree cameras that allow you to navigate tight corners and also see over the top of hills and as you're going down. It gives you a lot better visibility. Plus the 4 Super Duty lineup comes with new backup trailer assist. 
This is similar to what they did in the F-150. So if you have a fifth wheel trailer or a conventional trailer, what you'll find is you'll have to do some modifications to that trailer, how it's hooked up as far as there's a either a sticker you put on a conventional trailer or there's a piece of machinery or electronics you put on the side of the fifth wheel trailer. And what this allows you to do is as you're reversing the system, you can turn a dial and it'll allow you to, to back up more effortlessly. I have a video about this. We'll play this video here in a second. All right, here we are in the 2020 Ford F350. 250. 250. 250. God, we tried that. It's okay. Uh, 20, <laughs> 10K we're, GVW. Up. Yeah, yeah. We're having, we're having fun today. 2020 uh, Ford F250. We're just going to let this run because that's one of my channel. I just let things run. Yeah. Uh, we're doing, uh, this is a Tremor new package. We're doing a rock crawl, which is new mode in the truck. In the Tremor package, correct. Right. And we have the 7.3 liter. And uh, oh, by the way, I have to ask some questions. And we, we the height of this truck was one of my questions that came up in the, in the video of whether the height has changed in the 250 and 350. It has. The uh, 250, probably not the Tremor package, has been lowered by about an inch in the front and a couple inches in the back. So That's correct. Exactly. That, so that was the question. The 250, 350 non-Tremor, right. Uh, right, to help with bed ingress, egress, truck ingress, egress, right, we lowered the uh, we lowered the truck down about an inch or so. so that, that's a true statement. Basically the tremor that, went the other way. Right, right. The translation there is if you have a trailer, you're going to get in the bed easier. Yep. 100%. That's egress, ingress. Better is e Just you know, easier access. and better, right? That's, Even, that's uh, better. Even when it comes to like your fifth wheel, your overhang, right? A lot of people have concerns or they want to make sure they have enough clearance between their bud rail overhang and the fifth wheel, right, and the top of the trailer. Right, because so. in my neck of the woods, they do a lot of horse trailers. And once you get over a corner just right, right you'll crease a bed. Exactly. That's why there's yeah. a lot of headache cracks because they can't get in the bed and you want, right. don't increase it. So this afternoon, you'll see some of those, right, at our trail tour. Event, yeah. Right? You'll see gooseneck trailers, horse trailers, and fifth wheel camper trailers, right? So, that'd be good yeah. you so you, know, you don't have to crease your bed. Yep. Bonus. Right. That's you'll the goal. See, you'll see how it lays flat. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. So flat with the trailers just almost perfect. So the Tremors got your specific shocks. You, you tuned your own shocks. In-house tuning shocks. Um, you have bigger tires, clearly, because we have a higher ride height. We have different stuff going yep, on. Yep, so our 35-inch tires, a Goodyear Duratrack model. Okay, uh, do we have a lift? So the front suspension is modified slightly. The front springs are unique to Tremor, right? That adds some additional ground clearance to the front of the truck, so that brings height into the truck itself. There are no spring spacers, though. Okay. And in the rear, we have a taller spacer block under the rear spring. Right, okay. So on all 4x4 trucks, including DRWs, we have a spacer block. The Tremor just has a taller one, right? That helps that rear departure angle increase for us. Okay. And then one of the biggest things for the front approach angle, we trimmed up that lower air dam. Right, so if you ever get a truck side by side of a Tremor and a non-Tremor, you'll notice that air dam has been trimmed up quite a bit. That gives us that, that maximum amount of approach angle that we can get before we hit the front bumper. You mean the tear-off plastic? We call that? Yeah, you know, we're not tearing it off. We're not gonna tear anything off today. I'll tell you that, right? <laughs> but that, that's what that's what the audience calls it. <laughs> All right. So, but we what's cool about this is we do have a rock crawl mode. Definitely, hundred percent. All right. The first event we're gonna attack, right? All right. So we're attacking so, the. So let's pull uh, up rock here. We're gonna, you're gonna pick your line, right? You know, we're gonna pick our line. Then we're gonna set the truck up. Okay. So. As we get into the truck setup, right, it's going to coach us to what we're going to do. So we're going to come up here. I've got a good line looking here. Okay, we're going to stop for a second. All right, so the first thing we want to do is go into our drive mode. So our drive modes are here on the stock, right? Mm -hmm. It replaces the old tow haul mutton, but tow haul is still there, of course, right? But you can see we have different drive modes. So now we want to enter rock crawl. So to enter rock crawl, four lows required, right? Right, so we so did a neutral thing, Yep. and then we turned to four low. And shift is in progress. Shift is in progress. Oh, shift is complete. I feel like we need Jeopardy music when that happens. <laughs> Okay, and then back to drive. Back to drive. Okay, so now we're into four low itself, right? We're in rock crawl mode. You can see that. Now, to help us out, right, Tremor comes standard with the electronic rear locking differential. Okay, so we have locking rear, yep. not locking front. We have not locking front. Okay. We have limited slip front, though. Okay. So and unique the, to Tremor is that front axle with the limited slip diff. Okay, and we have the inclimometer. inclimometer we have the, the information here. you got Anyways, the off-road screen. That shows off-road screen. That shows our angle, and it shows our different angles. Yep, you got angle, pitch, and you got steering wheel angle. Okay. You got it. Those are words I can't say. I can say them, you know, when I drink some whiskey, I can okay. say those words. <laughs> all right, you're off the tongue now. Sober, I just... Uh, blah, 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 blah. All right, so this is our rock crawl event. So here it's all about kind of, you know control right right some rough terrain so it's all about control so that rock crawl mode helps change our you know, our pedal table right to desensitize the pedal a little bit so because the truck you tend to get a little bit of a bounce to it right you know we're going for some big rocks here so right. we want to have instantaneous response to that pedal we're not a race car right now mm -hmm. yep so we want to make sure that the the pedal's a little bit soft i'm not going to give it that much gas i'm going slowly um this is where that height is important 100 percent. this is all about approach angle Breakover angle, ground clearance, and departure angle. You know what also is important? These brake, these uh, seatbelts work pretty good too. Okay, they they do. That's not. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't go 
to the five point harness. <laughs> oh, oh, I don't have the, uh, the, the was it the, the Hans device? Yep, no, no, no Hans device. okay with that, right? All right, all right. It all depends on your driving it. You're in control, you're in control of the truck, right? You're in the control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's under warranty. That's, that's covered. <laughs> Jeez. That's all right. It's a rough course. That it's is. Rough course. Nice and easy. Did you, did you guys, did you guys find all the big rocks? You just leave a couple? No, that's, this was just already that's washed out mess rocks. right here, right? Oh, really? That was a big old pile of garbage. Those guys were knocking them over a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys are helping them out. Sure. You see this old bulldozer on the course, right? They just ran into it, the bulldozer, knocked some stuff. They said, all right, we'll just go over that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is an yeah, interesting course. All right. So what we do is we're, I'm going to stop you before we make that turn because we're going to get a little bound up here, right? Because right. we're going back into four high now. Yep. So that was our rock crawl mode. Went through the rock crawl. That was a true rock crawl. I don't know how many people can do that all day long. If they want to, go to town, right? But the rest of our course, right, we're going to run it in four high because we're not going to need to use rock crawl again. Okay. Okay? So we go ahead and exit rock crawl mode. All right, so wireless, this yeah. This is a real tricky demo, guys. Right, right. Yeah. This, this is this is, this is tricky. We got the in cord. Right. right. Yep, all right. So that's the way it should be. We've already connected it, yep. right? So you right, could right. push the button and allow the winch to come out of it. To, to unspool. Yep, yep. Right. already right. connected. We've already done that, so we're ready to yep. pull in. You ready? All right. It's really tricky. Wow. But you have to hold it down. Okay? Right. So if you let go, it's going to stop for safety reasons. Yeah, of course. Sure, sure, sure. So, so hold it down. Or got hit or something. Yeah, yeah. So obviously the beauty of the wireless is you can, you know, if you're out in the mud or you get wrapped, you know, wrapped around a tree and you have to make sure the cable's not getting caught, caught anywhere. Oh, well, you can stand in the corner, put your hand between your legs and, and do it so you <laughs> cover yourself, right? Actually, I'm going to go get a chair. Cheer. Right here. Right. Cold beer. Yeah, I'm going to wedge myself out of here. All right, we said factory orderable, dealer can install it as well. If you already have a tremor, it's available on tremor package. Right. And then we have, so the remote's got in and out, right? Pretty complex. Yep. And it times out after a while, again, for safety reasons, but you simply hold down both the in and the out button and it turns back on. And how do you keep it from... Twenty twenty Ford Super Duty. This is F two fifty Lariat. I have a kind of a cattle trailer behind me. I get nine thousand uh, pounds, well within range of this truck's capability. I have the seven point three liter V eight under the hood. I'm going to go up by six percent grade. It's a couple miles. I'm going to flip around, come back. Um, maybe I'll tell you some fuel economy numbers. It doesn't really matter. I'm not doing that much of a of a drive, but I just want to get you some experience. Um, what I'm experiencing, I should share with that my experience uh, behind the wheel of this truck. Got to pay attention here. Get out of the parking lot. I also want to talk to you about. They made some changes for this model year. They've lowered the bed in the rear a little bit, and it applies to F250 and 350. And I'm going to talk to you why that is important, um, especially with this kind of trailer I'm towing. I'm going to do, uh, in the inside this video, I'll have some, uh, the Pro Trailer Backup Assist. I did that demo, just got done with that, so I'm going to just put that in this video as well. So you can get the full package on towing. So I'm coming off the line here, and I'll put my foot into it. So that's 20, that's 30, that's 40, that's 50. Boy, that engine sounds good. That exhaust note sounds spectacular. And uh, I'm getting to 60 here in a second. I let off the foot a little bit, so don't don't take that for zero to 60. I let off the foot a little bit and just let it kind of keep getting up the speed. Um, I was doing a roast of tires on parking lot because it's a gravel-based parking lot. But going up this grade, um, let me get up to 45 here. Beautiful place here outside of uh, in Arizona, outside of Phoenix. So I'm at 45 miles per hour. I'm in fifth seventh gear just downshifted and a sixth gear now boy 2500 rpms it is shifting quite a bit it's shifting a little more than i thought um you can adjust that you can put it in manual mode and hold that gear but i'm just kind of getting my foot on the gas and letting it shift itself um, so again it just downshift and just shifted again i don't think that's hunting for gears that badly but it definitely is shifting more than i thought it was going to Again, though, I'm in a gas version of this F-250, and a diesel is going to be a different towing experience. But if you don't want to spend the money on the diesel and the diesel uh, oil changes and the diesel prices for getting it serviced, uh, this is a good option. I'm going to switch lanes here, and I'm going to go downhill. All right, I'm making a left here going down the hill, and uh, I'm going to... 
I hesitate to share this with you, but I'm sharing with you anyways. You're going to ask me a thousand times. The fuel economy I am getting on the Telltale screen says last 30 minutes, I'm averaging 6.9 mile per gallon, and that's all this truck is doing is going up this hill and down this hill, up this hill and down this hill. And so, to me, that's not really accurate at all. But for those who want to know and they want to want me to, you know, make sure you got everything done or want make sure that you got uh, information, there you go. That's what I'm getting. 6.9. It says in the computer screen. But again, that's going up really tough grade and going down. I want to talk to you about something. We talked about this truck being lowered, and the reason why that makes a difference for guys like me and guys like you is that we have the dip difference here, distance I should say, between the fifth wheel hookup and the side of the bed here. And I'll show you a little demo here, kind of demo. He's going to make a, a come around the corner. You'll see how this bed gets so close to the top of this um, fifth wheel trailer. What happens here is if you get this too tight, as you turn and you maybe have a spot where the, the wheels come up and you make a weird turn, you'll crease the side of your bed as this metal comes down and goes through that. And so as this gets more distance here and you have more gap there, you have less likelihood of damaging the bed and you have it more easy to get inside the bed as well to hook up your chains and your fifth wheel hook, hook up in there. And so what that'll allow you to do is allows you to keep the bed and not have to go flat bed headache crack because you can't access that or you can't make turns. And so I'm always a big fan of lowering these beds back down a little bit. So again, you don't crease this and you have better access to get inside the bed to hook up your uh, wiring and your chains. So inside the cabin of the 2020, we have an F-350 dually. We have the trailer, a fifth wheel trailer. We're going to do a backup trailer assist. Yes. My man, Dan, Don, Don. Don, correct. Long day. <laughs> so Don's going to do it. And uh, we're talking a little bit outside, but the, the biggest difference here is why we couldn't do it last generation was because we didn't have the electronic hydraulic assist that allows us to utilize system. Right. Correct. Okay. All right. So... Part of the tro pro trailer backup system is this knob, right? It's yep. The interface with the user allows us to control the trailer. You push the button in the center, it turns the system on. Pulls up the menu. So here you have whatever trailers you've already set up. So when you're setting up a trailer, you got to enter in the name. Right. Uh, but once you've done that, it's set up, one time set up, and you're done with that for that trailer. But you can always add another trailer if you got multiple trailers. All right, let me get that name. So is that is that badass or is, oh just reflection? So it's the name of the truck. We couldn't. No, nothing cool on that. Just yeah, I know. We're those like PR on. people. They don't let you do any fun. All right. So once you, you're here, you just push the OK button. That turns on this trailer. If it's already calibrated, you don't have to go through the calibration process again. Now with the all rate system, when it turn when you, you've had the vehicle off and turn it back on, you have to initialize all the all rate sensors. And that just means you have to drive a little farther. You know, 15 feet and you're good to go. So we're going to drive forward real quick. HMI is going to instruct me when I'm done. So let's just drive forward. And it's going to say trailer detected. There you go. You're done. Okay. The system's initialized. Now it knows where the trailer is. So do you have to do that in conventional towing? No. no just just the fifth wheel. Just the fifth wheel. But generally, you know, in a demo situation like this, we're ready to back up as soon as we turn on the trailer. Generally, people drive somewhere before they back up. And if yeah. your sensor's yeah. connected, you're good to go. Yep. All right. You have all the... So part of the 20 model year pro trailer back is integrating the trailer reverse guidance system with pro trailer back. Now we get all the camera views that were available with trailer reverse guidance. So the camera views available are the 360, right? This gives you, this is a nice view if you have things close to the front of the truck, let you monitor your blind spots, make sure you're not hitting anything as the trailer or the truck's moving and swinging around to control the trailer. Get your normal rear view camera view, not that useful for fifth wheel, more useful with a conventional trailer. And this is a wide angle view, same thing. Okay. Yeah, not that usable with fifth wheels. However, you know, you have the one from the top of the cab looking into the bed. You know, we want to know where you're, if, you know, if you're on a shorter bed and you want to maybe you have a uh, fifth wheel that maybe could hit your cab, this is a good view to have. We've mounted the, uh, the auxiliary camera onto the back of the trailer. So this is great. You don't need a spotter. You can see right what's behind you. Make sure you don't run over anything. And then you got the split view, which is basically looking at both mirrors. There's cameras mounted in the mirrors, pointing rearward. It allows you to see both sides of the trailer at the same time in the, in the truck. It just basically shrinks down the truck and narrows it and lets you see both sides. So it's an auto now. That means as the trailer moves at the higher angles, it's going to automatically shift. Now you can adjust that manually. I prefer the auto mode because that just adjusts with whatever the trailer's doing. But say you want to see one, more one side than the other, you can adjust that manually and turn it just by pressing the arrows and turning the manual mode. 
and basically that's the weirdest view you can have. <laughs> <laughs> that, right. that view is just crazy. All right, so now useful. You can see where you are relative to the cones. Oh, uh, sure. Now it just I makes your big ass truck look like it's uh, about yay big. All right. Yes, it does. <laughs> all right. So on this graphic, right when you're in the pro tray, the backup assist mode. The graphic of the trailer represents the current position. The white line represents where it's going based on the knob position. So straight back, it wants to line the truck. Oh, you're up. talking right there. Right there. Uh, okay, so all right. If I turn the knob, you'll see, oh, that's where I want to put the trailer based on this. Nine, nine, that's you know, oh, just okay. gives you an idea of the magnitude when I turn the knob, how much that's going to turn the trailer. So Sure. The other thing is, we'll let you turn the fifth wheel really tight. Right? Sometimes you need to do that with a fifth wheel. However, once you get a really tight turn on fifth wheel, it doesn't come out very well. It's really slow to unwind, and it'll keep turning as you back up. So normally, if you get into this yellow zone, we're going to say you, you probably are going to have to pull forward to straighten out the set. The course we have set up today, we're going to keep you out of the yellow zone, and we can just kind of back it up. But still, with fifth wheels, they're a little different than conventional in pro trailer backup assist. Once you get uh, the conventional trailer pointed in the direction, you release the knob, and it's pretty much going to follow the trailer. On this, you're going to have to kind of anticipate the turn a little bit early and come out of it a little early because the trailer is going to continue to turn if you're in a pretty heavy turn. Okay. And that's just based on the geometry differences. You know, when you pivot over the center of the rear axle, you don't have as much leverage on the trailer to turn it. That pivot point behind the bumper on a conventional trailer really gives you some advantages in maneuvering the trailer. Sure. All right. So we're going to try this out. I mean, it, it sounds reasonable to me. <laughs> All right. We're going to try it out. And when you're using the system, my best advice is turn and hold, right? Okay. It's not a good system to flick and move back and forth because it, it's going to confuse the system and say, well, do you want to turn? Do you want to go straight? And the sure. turn's going to go one way because it thinks you want to go one way. So turn and hold is the best way to use the trailer backup assist system. And so we have no hands on the steering wheel. He's holding that back. Are you giving any throttle? Well, we're a little downhill grade, so all i did got to do is um, leave off the brake. But, you know... Okay. The system still requires you to modulate the brakes and the throttle. Okay. It will give right. you a, a speed limit, so it won't let you go too fast that we can't control the system. So if you have to back up 300 yards, we'll let you go up to around 6 kph, which is pretty fast back in the trailer. But normally, when you're turning the trailer, you should try and go slow. It's easier to use the system. It's just overall easier. You just keep it nice and slow. It's the easiest sure. thing to control. So we're going to back it up. We're going to watch the cones in the mirror. And then we're going to just kind of match the curve of the cones. It's interesting how much that steering wheel is moving, and you're not moving that much. Right. Now, once you get near the back of your spot, you're going to want to change the views and say, well, I got that trailer camera. Let's see how close we are to the back of the spot. Yeah, there's a cone right there, yep. Kind of coming up to the back of the spot. If I get those cones right next to the bottom of the screen, that's right where the back of the trailer is. So if you're coming up to a fence, garage door, back of a camping space, you can tell without a spotter right where you are. There you hmm. go. That's all there is to it. Now, once you go back and uh, drive, the go system goes into standby mode if you want to readjust. But you have to do all this driving when you're going forward. That's pretty handy. Hmm. And we said conventional towing is about the same. There's a conventional towing rig over there. The biggest difference is we have a sticker on that trailer. Right. And you use image processing out of the camera to determine the trailer angle. This one uses a sensor. Yep. Pretty simple, guys. All right, here we are on the road with the 2020 Ford Super Duty. Bum, bum. In the uh, 7.3 liter uh, V8, uh, we are in the Trevor package. I didn't. I think this is a 250. I'm um, from Derek Shiki of There Will Be Cars. Good morning, um, everyone. Hello, hello. Um, I think this is. He's gonna check. He's got the. We got the handy dandy dealer sticker in front of us. But I just wanted to do kind of some talking. Sorry about the camera location. I hope you can see me. Uh, the sun is playing tricks with his rear view uh, window, and it's really hard to see in here. Oh, what do we got? Is it 250? 350. We're in a 350. So that's why I was going to comment about the ride quality because it's not so great. 
and that's why it's 350. It's got some pretty staunch um, payload and towing and with the long bed we have back here, it's a single rear wheel. I will do some B-roll here in a second on this truck we're driving specifically. And I'll do some B I have some B-roll taken on the interstate. I was doing 75 with the, which was a speed limit, not speeding, which was a speed limit by the way. And I'll show you the, uh, where we're at with the uh, uh, RPMs and the fuel economy. I hate doing fuel economy on these trips because it's such a, a tight trip that you don't get much uh, driving time as far as, you know, we're doing, it's a, I've been in the road for an hour. I don't do empty to full gas fill ups. I don't hand calculate. You just drive them to this off-road track we're getting to. And so right now it's saying 11.9, which could be accurate, couldn't be, could be off a few mile per gallon. Um, but that's what it's telling me right now today. And I have been doing pretty close to speed limit, but we're going to get on dirt here in a minute and I'll turn the camera back on. We get on dirt. I would say overall on the highway, I mean, it's riding more like a truck that's a little bit harder of a truck. I mean, it's not as smooth as the new Ram trucks are being, especially in the, the one tons, but it is a one ton and I anticipate putting some load in the bed to make it ride a little bit better. That's still where this truck's kind of at. I just, you can feel that choppiness, that tire a little bit. You just feel a little bit, and my butt dyno is telling me it's not riding so well. <laughs> now, I, I gotta say though, I'm surprised by how quiet it is. It is quiet in here. I mean, we're talking at normal voice. I'm not yelling by any means. Don't put that in the comments. But uh, we're talking normal voice, and I don't, I mean, it, it is a quiet ride. I, I think, you know, the GMCs with the triple sealed doors a little quieter, but this isn't bad at all. Yeah. So, and we'll talk more about this. There's not any changes interior for this year. I'll talk about the changes exterior and we'll talk about the stronger package. So, hey, we are back. We can hit this dirt road and I'll tell you how it's right on dirt, which I'm going to guess is going to be better. I think, I think so. All right. Now we're on the dirt roads in the middle of Arizona and uh, I'm seeing cactus and I'm seeing a whole lot of Arizona. <laughs> um, we're way out there. We're on this uh, dirt road. It's, it's kind of paved. I've seen a few big trucks on here, so it's definitely a service road for this off-roading um, drive we're heading towards. Uh, a few cattle guards, and again, I you know, it's riding probably better. It's a little smoother at times, right? We just hit something. Blah, 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 blah. So, my tongue. Yeah, right. <laughs> so my molars are fly, floating in the back of my teeth right now. Um, and there's the cattle guard. So, yeah, I don't... It, it To me, this is a very typical truck. It's... I don't know that's any better than uh, prior generation Super Duty. So if you're looking for this versus the older Super Duty, I don't think you're going to see a whole lot of differences um, driving. Uh, I am sitting up exceptionally taller, higher in this cab. I should be taller, higher. You know, you know what I'm saying. I haven't drank that this morning, by the way. And um, I, you just, you're hitting more stuff and you're feeling definitely the ruts in the road a little bit more. And you can hear that in my voice, hear that in the camera. I know the camera's shaking. And uh, yeah, it's, it's just typical kind of off-road. And I'm doing 30 miles per hour, by the way. I'm not doing that high rate of speed. And I think it's very interesting, the difference here in the ride quality versus say, uh, a Rebel or a Raptor. I mean, those are different half-ton versus, you know, one-ton trucks, but you definitely a different riding um, feel than what I'm used to. Might smooth out a little bit more if you go a little faster, maybe. That is true. If I really put the, the pedal down, let's see if that happens. So I'm doing 40. Let's, let's get the 50, see what happens. Derek with the on-spot commentary over here. He's the color guy of this conversation. <laughs> um, I'm doing 50, and... You know, I a little bit. It float, it's floating a little bit better. I mean, it's not... It doesn't... I, I feel like it, I'm still in control. It's not floating too much. But, yeah, I mean, I can... Those bumps are still pretty... pretty oh, they're there. They're there, yeah. You, one, you're feeling them. One thing I like about it is, I mean, you can definitely feel the jolt. I mean, it's there's no disguising that. But I like the fact that there's... To me, there's not a lot of wallowing to it. It's There's a certain stiffness to it that keeps the body from just kind of, you know, waving around. Wallowing. I like that word. Yeah, this is this is Texas for you. <laughs> He's wallowing over here in the passenger seat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I know we're going to go uh, off-road here in a minute, like really off-road. So I'm going to save the camera strengths for that and towing later in this video. So let's keep it on uh, moseying down the trail. That's right. No wallowing, moseying. <laughs> 
All right, guys, there's my thoughts on 2020 Ford Super Duty. So kind of recap for you. 7.3 liter V8 Godzilla, really impressive. Lots of power. I didn't feel like I needed a turbocharger or supercharger. I didn't need any of that stuff to drive the Super Duty. Did a really impressive job. Um, as far as driving on-road and off-road, the tire is a little bit of an issue. Ride quality, probably not as good as I wanted it to be, but it's not butter, it's a Super Duty truck. I mean, this is gonna ride a little bit differently. I thought towing was pretty exceptional with it. Yeah, I only did 9,000 pounds, but still, that's still 9,000 pounds. That's quite a bit of weight. And I thought I did an exceptional job with that weight. Um, I thought all the off-road goodies were great. You know, even though I don't have the electronically locked or disconnecting front sway bar and on the front lockers like the power wagon had, I didn't feel a need to have them. You know, as far as uh, criticisms would go, you know, $70,000 for our Super Duty. A little pricey, you know, they starts at 30, they get the 70. I mean, that's a that's a lot to, to get there. Um, it's not really a whole lot of other, other really that many other um, cons to it. You know, I mean, the interior could be better. I mean, Ram is set the bar so high. You can kind of argue about that all you want, but I thought it was a pretty good truck and I think it's a pretty solid buy. And so I think it's something you definitely want to check out at the dealer and kind of see what's out there if you're cross shopping. If you really need the off-road super duty kind of, uh, heavy duty kind of truck, this is definitely a good choice for you, and I think it's that much better than FX4. Absolutely.